Hi, this is Ron Rowland from Money and Markets TV. Last week, Mike Larson told you how Europe is an economic basket case. Today, I want to elaborate on that point. Europe is the epicenter of the earthquake that has rocked the global markets this month, and the shock waves are far from over. The Eurozone's problems first became evident in the so-called pigs nations, Portugal, Italy, Ireland, Greece, and Spain. But the root cause is the economic unity that politicians have always been so proud of. The region's common currency let the pigs feed off the prosperity of Europe's dominant nations. Bankers in France, Germany, and elsewhere went along because they saw a chance for easy money. And for a while, they were right. But the problem with pigs is they don't know when to stop eating. That gluttony brought Greece to its knees first, followed by Portugal. And now Italy is about to keel over. Thanks to out-of-control spending, government debt stands at 120% of gross domestic product. Now, even sky-high interest rates can't convince investors to buy any more Italian bonds. To see what this means for investors, just look at the PowerShares DB 3X Italian Treasury Bond Futures ETN. It follows the market for Italy's 10-year government notes. ITILT reached an intraday peak of near $22 on June 3rd. Then, barely two months later, it plunged to just under $15. That's a loss of almost 32%. But in the past three weeks, I tilt shot back up 39%. The reversal happened when it became clear that the European Central Bank would step in to try and prop up the markets. But what many investors don't understand is that the bailouts aren't designed to help Italy and the other pigs countries become solvent. They're designed to help the bondholders, the big European banks that are massively exposed to the sovereign debt of these nations. Now, let's contrast the trading in ITILT with a similar fund, the PowerShares DB3X German Bund Futures ETN. This one tracks a bond index in the same maturity range, but issued by Germany instead of Italy. Same continent, same base currency, different governments. You can see the difference right away. While ITILT was racking up a 32% loss between June 3rd and August 4th, Bunt gained about 21%. In one sense, this isn't surprising. We already knew Germany dominated European finance, but the comparison is still a bit startling. I'm not bold enough to say that markets are wrong about either country, but short-term moves can be exaggerated. I expect the situation in Italy isn't as bad as its ETN makes it look, nor is Germany as safe as Bunt may suggest. In the bigger picture, neither country has very good prospects. Growth in Germany is stalling out, and the public is in no mood to keep subsidizing its neighbors in Italy, Greece, or anywhere else. What the Eurozone probably should do is to refinance their debt with Euro bonds backed by the entire Union. As of now, they can't because the member nations integrate currencies, but not government spending policies. They can't have it both ways. Europe will recover eventually, but meanwhile, expect the volatility to continue. I'm Ron Rowland from Money and Markets TV. Thank you for watching.